Hey, football coach. You excited? Baby? I'm fired up. Let's go. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. Fired up. Fired up. Fired up. Fired up. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Eagles News Now. I'm professional wrestler Chris Wild, live from Bar 4133, and we are just under two hours away from the Eagles and the Cowboys Sunday night football. Now, look, I don't have to tell any Eagle fans watching this. This is the biggest game of the year for us. No matter what the records are, we always circle this game on the schedule, and we get to face them in Philly first go around. Now look, it's not going to be 70,000 people there, but I believe that the almost 6,000 that are there will make it sound loud as every single one of us hate the Cowboys and for numerous reasons. I mean, let's go back to at least when I was growing up. I had to hear over and over again how this was America's team. Self-proclaimed America's team. That's the audacity and arrogance that this Cowboy franchise has bestowed on us. We've always had to deal with the Fairweather fans that only come out when the Cowboys are doing well, which hasn't been much in the last 20 years. The uh, starter jackets all over the place. And again, constantly reminding us how they have won numerous Super Bowls and giving us those jokes about how we had no rings. Well, that went away in 2017. I don't have to tell you guys that. But we like nothing more as Eagle fans than beating the crap out of the Dallas Cowboys. And I gotta be honest with you, for the past couple of years, we haven't got the job done. And we all remember, I was at the game last year when it was basically the division on the line and the Eagles were able to pull off a win against the Cowboys. But before that, they embarrassed us at their house and we just haven't had much luck. Now, this game is huge for the Eagles. Normally, I have something written down. I have stats and all sorts of stuff. This is just pure passion here, guys. I'm absolutely hyped up for this. This is big for the Eagles because they need to show us that they can put together four quarters of football. Even last week against the New York Giants, who are as putrid as they come, we had to come back in the fourth quarter with six minutes left to go. I mean, it, it could have been a blowout the other way around. Uh, even the Ravens, the Steelers games, we showed up at the end, tied the Bengals, looked bad against the Rams, and who can forget that horrible Washington team loss? We have got to put all four quarters together here today, guys, and if there's any team to do it against, it is this football team. I'll get to them in a minute. As far as the Eagles go, news is they are getting some guys back and are getting a little bit healthier. Dallas Goddard being the surprise yesterday. Uh, it was reported by Adam Kaplan that he was going to be active for tonight's game. That is absolutely huge because the Eagles were running with just Richard Rodgers, basically, and a guy named Jason Kroom uh, as their tight ends. As Zach Ertz has been out and Goddard. This is big. Also, Jalen Rager was talked about earlier in the week. This guy is a super healer, and he will be back for the Eagles playing wide receiver. Can't wait to see this wide receiver core of Rager, Fulgham, Ward, Hightower, maybe even Kez Watkins. I don't know. I haven't looked at the actives or inactives yet this game. Um, but he returns. Now, the negative news. Lane Johnson not going to be able to play. His knee swelled up earlier today. He has been ruled out. Also, Miles Sanders, who I was really hoping can make it back for this game, is going to sit out another game. Now, Dallas's run defense is suspect, and this would have been a great chance for Miles to really get going. He will not be here. It will be... Boston Scott getting the lead duties again. And look, we're not playing the Giants, so he's got to show up. Corey Clement will also be in there, who again has been a ghost for the Eagles. And I'm going to guess that Jason Huntley is going to be there as well. Uh, Carson Wentz has got to show off against this Dallas defense that has been bad. Now they get Sean Lee back. Leighton Van Der Esch is there as well. And another week healthier. So it's not going to be as easy as it seems. And also, the Eagles cannot look. They cannot... Uh, look over any team right now. At 2-4-1, and one, we just can't. We got to play these guys like they're the better t uh, teams on the schedule, like they're the Steelers, like they're the Ravens. They got to play hard throughout. Now, as far as the Dallas Cowboys go, they are starting a third string quarterback named Ben DiNucci. I'm not even sure if I'm getting that last name right. Out of James Madison, now it has been said this guy's very cocky, um, he likes to air the ball out, he's been getting rave reviews at practice, but at the end of the day, he is a third string quarterback, and the Cowboys offensive line is an absolute mess, which means that this Eagles defensive line has got to earn their money. I feel like I say this over and over again every week, they've got to do something. Fletcher Cox 
needs to come out of hibernation. Uh, Javon Hargrave needs to do something because he has been invisible. Now we get Malik Jackson back for this game. Um, we're going to need him. Brandon Graham's having a hell of a year. He's going to have to continue it. Um, and man, if we can get anything from Derek Barnett or Josh Sweat, that would be awesome. Because again, this guy's a third round or th third string running back. If the Eagles cannot beat a third string running back, if this defense cannot a running back quarterback, if they cannot beat him. I don't know what to tell you guys. When I'm speaking of running back, they do have Ezekiel Elliott. Now, he has had a bad year, but he can be dangerous, and he loves playing the Eagles, as we always seem to have a problem with him. Um, and it's going to be tough stopping him in this situation because they're just going to keep on giving the ball to him or try to find ways to get the ball to him, having uh, Danucci back there. Also, we're going to have to see a guy we would have liked to draft, and it's C.D. Lamb. They have Amari Cooper and a guy named Michael Gallup who couldn't keep his mouth shut this week when he said he hopes the Eagles' defense brings the house. Now, if you need any other bulletin board material, then knowing that it's the NFC East is on the line and it is Cowboy Week, I don't know what to tell you, but there it is. There's your bulletin board material. Bring the house and make him pay for saying that. As far as the Eagles go, I forgot to mention their offensive line because to be quite honest, it absolutely scares the hell out of me what they're doing right now. You had Jordan Maialata at left tackle playing pretty well. Nate Herbig next to him was good. Um, they had to switch that up last week a little bit because of injury. Like I said, Lane Johnson isn't playing. So now what you're dealing with is Jason Peters coming back. 38-year-old uh, Jason Peters coming back at left tackle, and you're throwing Maialata on right tackle. That is extremely tough for any player to do. Nonetheless, a guy who really hasn't played football besides this year. I mean, this is an ex-rugby player, and he is impressed at left tackle, but now we're telling him to do something different. Jason Peters is always hurt, and he was getting whooped up on by the Cincinnati Bengals the last time we saw him. So I am absolutely concerned about this offensive line, as the Cowboys do have some talent on that defense. They just haven't played. They just haven't played well. And if any game for them to wake up, it's against us, and I don't want to see that. So I hope this experiment that's being thrown out there works. And uh, man, my lotto will be golden in my eyes if he can shut out Demarcus Lawrence, who is definitely the best guy on that Cowboys defensive line. As far as a prediction, if you're looking for a prediction from me, I hate to give score predictions. I think the Eagles are going to win. I think they should win this football game. But I do caution you. If there is any team or defense that will make a bad team look good, it seems like it's been the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Vegas has them up by 10.5 last I checked. It might have went down since Lane Johnson went out. Again, that is... Nothing but bulletin board material for the other team. Nobody knows anything about this Danucci guy. He could end up being great. I just don't know. I don't want to see it against this Eagle team. I want to see four quarters of straight kick their ass football from this team for the first time this year. You've got guys healthy. Um, you got guys coming back. And you are in a groove if you're Carson Wentz. And let's just tear this team apart limb from limb. So when I come back on my live. I'm not absolutely miserable, and I am actually happy for once. I don't want this to be a nail-biter either, guy, either, guys. I just I just don't. Let's get this victory. Um, it's against the Cowboys, and let's start making this season worth something, as I think the Eagles can, if they get on a roll. Again, nothing from this year tells me that they're going to do that, uh, but I've got faith in my team. I bleed green, and there is no way I'm not going to be hyped up for a Cowboys fan, no matter what state our team is in. With that being said, guys, enjoy the game. As always, if there are any other updates, I'll cut in live. Stay safe. Stay healthy. The Cowboys absolutely suck. Dallas sucks. Go Eagles. And I'll see you guys after the game. E-A-T-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-S-E-O-L-E-